Okay, hi everybody! Uh, so good to see you. I was actually, there's this fun little lag between when it starts and when it goes and when both channels sort of kick off. Um, but hi and welcome! It is Wednesday, that it means it is time for some mini mayhem. And I am so going to first adjust the volume on the music because I just realized that's going nice and strong. Um, but I am so happy to have you join me today. It is, for those of you who celebrate, it is St. Patrick's Day today. And while it may seem I was being terribly clever today by showing off uh, more warlock tiles surrounding the kitchen and tavern, I assure you that was absolutely, <clears throat> pardon my raspiness, that was absolutely by accident. But a happy accident. You know, what is it Bob Ross says? Happy little accidents? Um, so we are basically uh, going to take a look at, I have another room build for you. I don't know why this is happening. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, I know why. Because it is March, and that means my allergies are kicking in. <laughs> and, oh, let me fix. There we go. Somehow that got highlighted. So, if you are new to Mini Mayhem, welcome. Thank you so much. I am Muse. I will be your host for today, and today we're taking a look at Warlock Tiles. If you are not familiar with Warlock Tiles, they are this fantastic terrain system that you can purchase through WizKids and other uh, FLGS type things. They are great for those of you getting into using miniature terrain for your games. And uh, we're going to sit down and take a look at everything. And if you're curious about how these work, uh, you can check out some of my previous live streams that deal with Warlock Tiles and the various sets that have come out. You can also check out the Warlock Tiles playlist because that too has the how to use your Warlock Tiles and other things along those lines. Uh, and and also, since this broadcasts both to Twitch and YouTube, and I want to make it so that everyone can, you know, interact with each other, I do highly recommend that you look over here, okay? So while there is the chat in the channel that you're watching, there is also the chat here next to me, and that is everyone combined. So that way, if you see someone make a comment over on Twitch, you in YouTube land can also comment back to them. And the little icons let you know where each person's living. Well, not living, but is sitting. Let's put it that way. Uh, but so great to see everyone. Hello. Uh, is it Tyan? Hello and welcome. Hello, Brandon. Hello, Garar. I love that name. Uh, hello, Raphael. Hello, Piel Stowe. And hello, our Martinez. Thank you for joining it. And hello, Dragon Shadow. I just saw you. I, I also have the other chats open up too. Uh, and hello, Dragon Shadow. Good to see you as well. So today, what we're doing, I'm going to feature uh, two of the accessory sets because they come out today all right so what does this mean this means when you see the tavern and the kitchen from the warlock tire tires no warlock tiles accessories that means that you can get these in store now so you know i'm always going to encourage you to go to your friendly local game store your flgs first okay if you are not sure if you have one near you all you need to do is go to whizkids.io slash local store. You're going to be brought to a website that you plug in all your information. You can even decide how many miles you're willing to travel for these things. Trust me, some things are worth traveling for. Um, but you can plug in all your information and then what happens is you'll get a list of stores who carry WizKids products. If you do that and mm, no deal, that's okay. It happens because I understand sometimes you'll be in different areas and, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you just have to go online and if that's the case what you can do is check out shop.wizkids.com to make your warlock tile purchases instead uh they are also available over on i was gonna say belgium because i was just reading gert's message not belgium uh but they are also available over on uh, amazon and you can also check out other places that may supply them online i think that pretty much covers the wear of all of these so yes everything you're seeing today has been released it is out there in the wild available for purchase, available to add to your collection. Uh, but I want to show you the kitchen, the tavern. I'm also going to show you a little bit more about the angle sets because last week I showed you more of the curve sets. Uh, so this week you get to see something else happening over here. Now, uh, I have already taken the miniatures out of their blisters because there's a lot of little pieces. A uh, little uh, disclaimer here. The sets that I got were used for our photography. Why are you doing this to me? Um, the sets that I got were from what we used for photography. So a couple pieces between getting from there to me. Basically, I've lost two mugs in the way. Somehow they've gone disappearing on me. So what I've done is I've already taken them out of the blister and put them into containers so I can be sure that all these little bits don't get lost. I don't want anyone thinking if I get this, that means there's going to be missing pieces. No, what that means is because these were already popped out, they were sort of just floating loose in the box and, you know, 
somehow found their way out in shipping. Uh, so I, I will make sure you get the full list of what you can expect in your brand spanking new, never been open box. Mine in this situation was not the case. So um, yeah, I lost a couple mugs, but quite frankly, I have so many little, little detail things of my own in my collection. I'm not exactly heartbroken over it. Uh, but I thought it'd be fun to first take a look and we're basically going to uh, do like a set dressing, if you will. I have the setup already done. So we're going to flip over. Well, I'm not going to flip over because that would be talented. And hello, 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 everyone who is joining in. Uh, Big Bearded Nerd, Alexander, Ron Davis, uh, Gert, uh, Valerius, uh, Volinar's Workshop. Oh, hello. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, so we have, I don't know why I just slipped to that one. Uh, I'm going to be feisty with accents for warning. So we have um, this layout that I've created and true to form, I have done it so that I'm going to have to lock the camera up here. Up goes the camera. Um, so that you get, we're going to do some panning. Uh, so you get this little layout here. This is, this is a tavern that I've created. Okay. So here you can see it's a three room tavern. That's the main tavern area. These I'm still debating on. So let me take them off the floor. Um, all this was built. Let me be clear about this. All this was built using my town and village one, and then the angles and curves town and village, which have just recently come out. Um, I used all of that and I've also tapped into some of my dungeon tiles tiles. I tapped into that set too for the floor layout. Okay. So that's why I have like this big room, not boo, but this big, uh, layout going on here. Cause I did need to pull tiles from my dungeon tiles set as well. Uh, but everything in terms of walls and windows and doors, those are all for my town and village sets. So we have the main tavern area here. There is a bedroom over there. You'll see why. And then over here is going to be our kitchen. Now, the other thing I like to do with my warlock builds, and you'll see this before, is I always make sure these are modular enough so that I can break them apart and have the pieces fit in as I go along. So sort of like, depending on where the party is, I can do builds and reveals that way. So that's just something that you'll see me doing. And I do want to talk about, here you can see the angles are in use. One little minute. I'm just seeing that my auto zoom is on and that's going to make me batty. Um, so I want to make sure that you see the, um, angles put to use because there are some little nuances with the angles that are slightly different than what you can expect from the standard tiles. Uh, that being said, please keep in mind because of this, there are plans that I will be making more how to tutorials for the curves and for the angles sets. Uh, that is something that we are noticing coming up. So we want to make sure we are fitting that demand and that everyone gets their uh, angles and tiles figured out and there is a how-to video for each of those. Uh, so the tavern does not have a name. I have not named this tavern. So if, uh, if we're feeling clever, if we're feeling creative, I am all for it. Uh, I thought it'd be fun. Let me get this reestablished here. I thought it would be fun to get this going where we can create Hold on, now I gotta get the camera back. I'm not gonna lie, I love my Brio because it's doing this so well. I need to figure out why the chat keeps doing this new message game on me. Um, restream, it's one of those fun things. So, um, I thought it'd be fun if we could think of a name for this tavern and the official layout design, I will name that tavern name uh, because I do take pictures and everything like that. Uh, so I thought it'd be fun when I go to make up my schematics to uh, have my pictures and everything that are logged from all my other builds, I'm hoping to eke out time to actually get those in. Uh, but then that way, uh, people can check it out. Uh, oh, so we're getting some fun ones already. We have Two, two Fools Tavern. Nobody's in. No, Big Bearded Nerd. Didn't we use that for... Um, uh, we used that in uh, All That Glitters, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> the Rusty Helm. Oh, I like that. The Old Ox Skull Inn. Okay, these are fun. I'm liking these. The Green Fairy. Mm -hmm. The Green Fairy. You know what I may do? Oh, but I kind of want to get this figured out ahead of time. The Tavern with No Name. <laughs> I thought that's what it was. It was from All That Glitters. Um, the Dewdrop Inn. Now, see, I just like Dewdrop Inn because that sounds nice. Uh, there's no sign. It's just an old battered helm outside. Oh, nice. Um, ta this is fun because absinthe. Yes. Got the, yes, definitely. So, 
Okay, I, I'm seeing that. Uh, yes, we like the idea of naming the tavern. <laughs> Maybe what I'll... Oh, okay, how about this? <gasps> Thirsty Tarasque? Oh, I hate onions. Oh, oh, that one's fun. <gasps> I don't have a favorite at all, folks. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. That one's a good one. I think what I will do, I kind of wanted to do it by the end of this, um, it's a wood elf owned inn. What I was hoping to do is we could have a name by the end of the stream. Uh, but I think what I may just do is go in and pull the names and we'll do a poll. We're going to do a poll on WizKids official, uh, <laughs> why is it doing this? Um, we're going to pull, uh, a, we're going to pull a poll on WizKids official, uh, Social. Uh, Twitter. That's the word I want. I'm like, one of the socials. One of the socials does a poll for you automatically. On Twitter for WizKids. Not mine. On WizKids. I'm going to create a poll. And we're going to have people vote on it. And then what I'll do is when we get the winning name, I will share photos of this all set up and dressed like we had ready to go. Um, and we'll announce what the name is for that one. Um, yeah. I think that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. And then... Uh, Ooh, okay, okay, okay. This is this is, is totally legit. <laughs> it's like totally legit, legit. Okay, it's totally. All right, I'm having too much fun with this. So, I thought what I would do first is I'll work my way from here and over, which means we're gonna start with the kitchen. So I'm going to pull that off a little bit here and pull this closer. Now, as you can see here, and we're gonna loft and tip. Here is the build that I have going for the kitchen. And again, I purposely created it so that this will feed in to the other. So essentially you have this great angled hallway using the angles set, the town and village angle set expansion, and then moving into using town and village uh, one. That means these are all the one inch tall walls. Okay, everything is one inch tall. Uh, I was tempted to blend the two together, uh, but actually this worked out a little bit more cohesively going this route. So what I did here and what I'm going to make sure that I am stressing here is I did the layout of this ahead of time. Reason being you are going to find with curves and with angles that sometimes what you are envisioning, envisioning may not always work out in reality, okay? Just because there might be some odd spacing or things along those lines because you're adding in things like curvatures and angles so it does slightly skew your tile count width. Um, like over here, uh, right through here, you can see that this wall, it bumps up into part of the tile, which means I can't put this window flush in this tile. So the way I fix that is I basically work this over by adding in an extra little feature here. Instead of using the traditional external corners, I actually grabbed an internal corner, which means it's going to be free floating. There's no way around that one, which means it's going to be free floating. I popped in the edge caps, which I've shown you before. So by popping in the edge caps, what I'm able to do is now turn this into a shorter external corner and pop it into place so that I now have everything meeting up nicely. Another trick for filling space when you're working with the curves and the angles in your builds, you can also start putting columns in as spacers, which I have going over on this wall, okay? So again, because I had to use this, ex this internal corner as an external, I was going to have a gap sitting here. So all I needed to do was then go in and take one of the columns, uh, the pillars, and put that in between the two. And now I have, again, everything filled up in my wall. So again, make sure that you get everything going ahead of time. Do your layouts ahead of time. And then that way you know if your layout's going to work or if you need adjustment. I also will take photos when I am done with my layout because then when I go to put everything together, I can look at my photo, reference what's happening, and make sure I have everything set up and ready to go. Or if for some reason something pops out of place, I can quickly look to my photo and be like, oh yeah, that's right, that's where this is supposed to go. The other thing I will do is, especially if I want to be able to lift things up, like I said, this is going to be a free floating one. If I want to be able to lift things up and I know it's going to be an open floor plan, 
please pay attention to this one. If I know this is gonna be an open floor plan, instead of just doing the clip in the center of the tiles, like you've seen me do in the past, I will actually add in extra clips to make for a more secure and firm hold. You can also build these on things like a thin strip of cardboard. Uh, some people have been saying plexiglass and things like that, and that we can just lift and go to in that matter. But prep, prep, prep ahead of time. So see, you can see here I have the walls, uh, the doors and the walls, I should say. I knew here and here need their center points. Let me turn this here. I know that I have a clip right there, and I have a clip right there in the tile in connection. So that way, these posts can straddle that clip and hold it in more securely. If you don't do that, if you have it so there's clips in every single opening, those pieces will not sit in place between the tiles. Um, so, you wanna make sure you get that little rundown ahead of time of how I go about these builds, the sort of method to my madness and what to expect, you know, a quick little tip here, as you start incorporating your curves and angles, always do your layout ahead of time and there are quick little cheats to make things happen. It's just keep it in mind, things like this external corner is actually an internal turned external and it's just gonna free float because you don't have the uh, clip insertion on that area. But that being said, my dears, let's spin this around and let me also pull up because I'm gonna show you the menus too. I wanna to be able to toggle my focus. If you're new to the channel, by the way, uh, you will see that I oftentimes will toggle focus because sometimes distance is better than close up and I need to be able to recalibrate my cameras. Uh, so when that happens, just bear with me. I do my best to kind of make sure everything is going. Uh, let me see, I saw that there was, oh, also thing. Uh, questions. If you have a question for me, you can see that some of my usuals in the chat have already done it. Mwah, thank you so much. That is where you want to type out in caps question and have your question follow. I will do my best to answer them for you to my knowledge at this time. I saw something a little bit of a while ago. See, I have to scroll. Uh, suggest I like how everyone's adopting the suggestion too. Uh, where was that? There it is. Any news on floor packs? I don't have any news to share at this time. However, I do have news that what you can expect coming up next will also make these little adjustments that I was talking about a heck of a lot easier. And that is going to be the one inch wide tiles, which you will be seeing coming out for the standard sets as well as for um, curves and angles. So something to keep in mind, those will also be getting video tutorials. Um, but yes, if you're new, you'll see that is something that I like to go and do. I will adjust the focus as I go along. Also, if you're new, I'm going to YouTuber and twitch, twitch, twitch it. I'm not sure about that phrasing. Uh, but if you're new to either of the channels, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to get into it soon. Uh, just do, you know, you can hit that subscribe or, you know, the heart and follow us, subscribe and very exciting news on the YouTube side. People, the channels hit 10,000. I just saw that this morning. So yay. Very, very cool stuff. Uh, but yeah, please join us in the communities because it's wonderful and it's great to see all these fantastic people, usual names, new names. Uh, hello, Smokebeard. And Richard Riley, hello as well. And hello, Leonardo. Hello, Mike. Hello, Morpheus. I think Morpheus. I think I already said hello to you. Uh, but yes, I'm doing the best I can to keep up with the chat and also do this. Now, since we're doing kitchen, I will show you the box. But remember, I have taken things out of this already just because. I'm gonna flip over to main screen because it'll be easier to see from this camera than, well, this camera. <laughs> so this is the box you're gonna see this in. Again, when it comes to Warlock tiles, the colors do mean something, okay? Your accessory sets are going to come in this sapphire blue-esque box, all right? And on the sides, you will see a little gear icon. That means it is an accessory. Accessories are $49.99 if you need MSRP on that one. And this is obviously for the kitchen. So you'll have all your minis in their blisters or in the blister when you get it. I took mine out, so they're not there anymore. Um, yes, the one inch tiles I'm very excited about. Hopefully we'll have soon on hand because then there's some other builds I really want to get into doing for you and showing for you. Uh, but I just can't do it right now because of that limiting factor. But these are going to make builds even more um, complex and interesting and I'm just it's gonna be it's gonna be a neat feature but there are gonna be some nuances to those as well in terms of how you incorporate them into your builds but here is the back of the box and you can see you have your features you have the full sets photoed here a photo here shown here I'm missing two of these all right so right off the bat I'm gonna let you know I'm missing two mugs I don't know where they went they're probably in some FedEx truck is my guess uh, and as well as the list of contents so in this 
what you're going to get is a kitchen workspace, a kitchen stove, kitchen shelves, a kitchen island, uh, two of the kitchen shelves, kitchen island, a food chest, a stone sink, a server, a pitcher, tankards, four of them, okay, four of them, I have two of them to show you, uh, roasted turkey with garnish, roasted pig with garnish, now I'm hungry, bucket, a privy, I'm not kidding, a privy, a wash basin, basin, a wash basin, enunciation, it's a good thing, a uh, wash tub, and and outhouse we are gonna have a place to put it uh so that is everything for the kitchen box okay if you choose to keep them like this that is completely up to you for easy organization then you can just kind of pop them into your shelves and almost like treat them like books totally up to you um people do ask me as i'm speaking away from the microphone people do ask me how i tend to store my uh sets i actually store in Tupperware bins because what I can do is stack these up and I get a little bit more space that way uh, in organization. So that is just um, how I will tend to do it. <laughs> Sean Connery. <laughs> Not wrong. Um, so uh, that is how I tend to store my sets after the fact. I also don't go around and like rattle them like crazy. So they do hold up pretty well like that. I haven't seen any get chipped, mucked up or anything like that. Uh, but a valid question and something I wanted to respond to. So now we're back to the overhead here. What I'm gonna do is show the pieces to you right here where my hand is, and I will be adjusting focus just a little bit. So I will also, also, also be pulling in miniatures from some of the previous sets because we're setting up this tavern. We're making this a get together, people. We're making this something fun. This is gonna be a party. Uh, Cause again, this is, this is, it's St. Patrick's Day. Um, so here we go. Let me just quickly, so one of the first things, this is the bar. I need the kitchen, the tavern, I should say. So let's take a look at everything that comes with the kitchen. So I think first let's show the, out the outhouse is ready to be shown. Let's put it that way. So let's take a look at the outhouse. So here is, and this is where I need to fix focus. Focus. There we go. So this is the outhouse and it is a classic outhouse. You see there's wood grain detailing, you have the crossbars, you have the rivets for the nails, all that goodness. The door swings open and it swings closed, just like that. Hello, Witch Hammer, how are you? Um, <clears throat> pardon the clearing of my throat. And then here is the privy part. All right, so, you know, just a simple privy, but what it does is it nests into the outhouse and then you can open and close it to, you know, if, if you're gonna role play out that scene. So what I'm gonna do is we have a lovely door over here. Let's just say the outhouse is just outside. So we'll stage it like that, that the outhouse is just outside our kitchen. So that's, that's, that's two of the pieces that you're gonna see. And then these are more just window dressing from other things. Let me show you the shelves next. Show you the shelves. So you get two of the shelves, one and two. And again, going back to fantastic wood grain details, they actually look very, they look like a set of shelves I personally have. So that to me is hysterical, but even the wood graining goes on the top here. How lovely is that? Uh, so you can even put little things onto the shelves if you so choose. And that's the other side. So it's basically the same either side and you get two of them. So I'm putting my shelves here. Okay, we'll put the shelves there. Um, is that getting dark in that corner? Because I can quickly... One moment, please. There. There we go. Okay, so now you can see that. I might flare out personally because, you know, the girl's pale. But now you can see these better. Th th this is more important than... <laughs> uh, so let's see here. Um, Question, have there been internal discussions as to whether to turn the outhouse into a whole product line in order to cover the big demand for outhouses and demons? You know, I don't know, but you're not wrong because I do see a lot of people are building outhouses, which I find interesting. It's an interesting choice, no? Um, <clears throat> so we have those. Those are your shelves. And then you have the kitchen. They call it the workstation. Let me put this over here. Actually, we'll do this. So this is the workspace, I should say. So here is the kitchen workspace. Once again, all of the great detailing. Yes, there's that little bit of legalese on there, but it blends in nicely. But look at the top. 
So you have all that wonderful detail, the, the nail heads in there. And it basically sits the span of two inches, a little bit more than two inches. Let's we'll see. Okay. So that's going to go, I think I'll put it here. All right. We're going to put the workspace there. And now we have some more little goodies. So here we have the, I'm just making sure I'm giving you the right names. So here we have the stove and the Oh, this is the island. So this is the workspace. This is the island. Take it back. This is the island here. <laughs> Here's the workspace. So here is the stove and the workspace. Okay. Stove is here. Workspace is here. And then we have some fun elements. So for the stove, we have this little lit fire that you can tuck right in there. For the workstation, you have a pile of logs. So how great is that? So you have that all set up. Hello, Kevin Hammond. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, let's say, I want to put the stove in here along with the, so there's going to be a little bit of space behind this, but I thought it'd be cool to put it, I need two hands for this. There we go. I thought it'd be cool to kind of put it back there in its own little bump out. Uh, because if you've been to like castles or really old homes, more often than not, they will have like these special little bump outs uh, that were specifically for the areas where there was going to be fire and obviously chimney on top and everything like that. Uh, so that is the stove and the work space. This is the island. All right. And then we also have the sink right here, which again with the detail you even have this water effect in the top which I thought was so much fun to see there so you have the water in the bowl just a pewter bowl so you have that I'm not sure I'm gonna put this one yet um maybe there and here you also have this is the this is the stone <clears throat> right yeah this is the stone sink Okay, so you see stone, and you have this little barrel thing with the it doesn't the lever doesn't work, but you have this one, and that is really cool with two different features that go into it. So you can have it, you can actually have it three ways. So you can have it so it sits empty. Okay, hello Bradley Miller. Um, you can have it so it sits empty. You can have it so. It is just filled with water. There's this little plain water insert that goes into it like that. It snaps into place, which I'm not going to do right now, but it snaps into place. And in addition to that option, there's also, and how adorable is this one? There's also the option to have it so it looks like there are dishes sitting in the sink. All right. So keep that in mind. You have some modu modular options there. And I'm going to put this... You know what I'm going to do? Let me put this over here. Let's say here is where they sort of wash their hands after food prep. Here is where they are going to wash the dishes and such after they're done. And then we're going to go into... Some other fun aspects. So then there is in here, here's the wash tub. So here's the wash tub again. Wood details, metal banding. And I like this little extra touch. See how that band goes around? You get the double up in the back, which you actually would see in those pieces. And then, are you kidding me? Where did you go? And then, along with that, <laughs> there is a water insert. Okay, so here is the water insert. It's a darker blue. It's not clear like the other one, but again, it's that transparent plastic. That pops into place just like that. And ta-da, you have your wash basin going, which let's just put it, um, I'm going to hold off on that one. This one's going to go in a different spot, but that does come with the kitchen. I want to make sure you know that that one comes with the kitchen. And then you also get, let me pull these out because these are fun. Now we're getting into the little bit of stuff. 
<clears throat> Pardon me. Yep. We're almost there, folks. Like I said, there's a bunch of little things in here. Little bitty things. Okay. Here we go. So, these are where we start getting into little details. Literally. Uh, this is the roasted pig. Which... Trying to find a good spot to show it off. It is, you know, it looks like a roasted pig on its pretty little garnished up on lettuce with, I think those are lemon slices. It does not have the apple in the mouth, in case anyone was wondering. But you get that. So let's say we're going to put this on the island right there. And then here is the turkey one. I mean, how stinking adorable are these? I am going to use adorable just because we're going into small. <laughs> uh, Michael Mordor, I don't know if these, I don't think there are plans to print these out as of now, um, as unpainted. Everything comes pre-painted uh, for Warlock tiles. Okay, continuing on, we have the bucket, which sits empty, just an empty bucket, but wood details, band around, and a rope handle. Um, yeah, you could, you could kit bash a little bit and add an apple. So I'm going to put the bucket over, actually, let's put the bucket here. Like, you know, fire safety. We'll put the bucket there. And then here is, this is how small these things are. Here is the pitcher. Right there. So I'm going to put the pitcher in the center of the, of the island there. <clears throat> and then you should be getting four of these, but again, mine went missing. Uh, just be, like I said, that's not gonna be the case for you, but here is what one of these, they're actually quite tricky to show off, but you can see it's just this tiny wee little mug with a handle and everything. So you'll be getting four of those. And these I'm actually going to, I'm going to put to the side for the tavern. Yeah, let's do that because they'll, they'll make a little bit more sense in the tavern than putting them in the kitchen. And finally, you will get a lovely servant for the kitchen okay she kind of has that barmaid-esque look to her let's bring a little bit closer so you can see uh, so in her hand she has both a mug of it looks like ale because there's foam at the top and she has a larger pitcher in hand so she's another one I thought we could have some fun <clears throat> pardon me thought we could have some fun talking about names She's going to need a name too. So let's think about names for her. What could her name be? And we'll take it from there. Um, if you want to give her a name, that could be fun. I don't think we're going to turn that into a poll. It's definitely the tavern. I want to give this a name. Um, so, <laughs> we're Phineas, do a real thing. Um, so, definitely want to give her a name. I thought that could be something cool to do. But for now, let's get a closer look of what this looks like. I'm going to shift my focus a little bit here. So we're going to move the camera. If you have seasickness, look away until I say okay. But here, I'll move my shadow out of the way. Here you can see the whole kitchen is laid out, ready to go, set for your encounter. So that is one room done. What I'm going to do is shift this back a wee bit, get it to the very corner. And now Martha. <laughs> there are so many little details that have been addressed in this that look fantastic um, I'm very very pleased with it all quite frankly okay so now let's just quickly talk about these angled tiles okay you can see here I have this pull it back a little bit keep pulling it back pull it back and up there we go I'm not going to be able to get the full shot in, unfortunately. It's just because I got grandiose with my own builds. Uh, but you can see here you have this angled hallway. Now, when it comes to using these, what's going to happen? And let me quickly... Oh, I should have pulled this off. There we go. So what's going to happen is these sit in more securely into the tile itself. And they fit together in a very specific way. So basically, it is the diagonal side of that angled tile that you want to have bumped up against your wall okay 
If you try to use either of these sides that work on the corner, it's not going to fit together. It's a very specific fit. And again, there are going to be tutorials on this so you can see this in action, but I just quickly wanted to address this. When it comes time to using these, you'll see they have these angles going on here. It's very trapezoidal, okay? So because of that, this is why you need to be careful with your layouts. But features that are familiar, yes, the windows pop in and pop out like they do on other tiles on their walls, okay? So I can have fancy or I could have wiggle wiggle or I can have just straight up plain exterior if I wanted to. I am gonna keep it plain exterior. Then what you're gonna to need to do is once you get your layout going, you can then put your walls up, but you're gonna to need to be aware of the fact that you're gonna to need to keep working with your pieces because these are all on angles. They will meet up and work flush against these walls, but this is also why they're thinner. In order to sit more flush with the traditional walls, they are a thinner wall as well. Uh, some people have been trying to put these together. Again, more detailed video. This is a rundown. <clears throat> so in order to get these to fit together, they had to thin the walls down so that they would meet up nicely here and here type of situation. But you will also need to make sure that you have it so that if one is angling like this, the other wall will be angling like that and then they fit together. There will also be some limitations and some gaps that will happen by the setup just because of how these angles are created. So be aware of that case. The ones that are longer have a one angle, the ones that are shorter have another angle, but they will meet up with each other. Uh, there will be a far more detailed video on this breaking it down because of that situation. And then you'll see right here. See how I have these two different angles? Yoink, let's shift this a little bit. This is what I'm talking about. One angles this way, one angles that way. And then what they do is they just bump in together. Now, if I wanted to have the room meet up, this is where I said you have to be careful about your edges. If I were to try and make this work, sure, this would actually meet up nicely on this side with a wall piece, as you can see here. But the room would be bumped forward, as you're seeing happen right now. If I tried to have it happen over here, what you will end up with is this odd gapping, okay? This is why, and I discovered this yesterday, this is why when you are using these and saying you're trying to do a sort of uh, long hallway like I'm doing right now, what you will need to go in and do is make sure you're working in rows. It seems to be a count of three is your magic number, or odds rather. If you work in odds, you get a better result for making sure things are matching up flush because I could have had, actually, no, it is three. Take it back, it is three because now, this, no, it is still odds. This will meet up nicely with this piece so that the room blends in, okay? Move the, again, if your camera motion is affecting you, my apologies, uh, but you can see here, now it's meeting flush against this wall and it's also meeting up flush against this wall. So always, always, always be careful, plan ahead of time and be aware of the fact, this is also something I wanna stress, these do not sit in as tightly to the clips because they are a thinner wall, okay? Uh, so when you go to move things around, just be aware of that and where your edges may uh, not be as secure just because there's not as much clip inserted into the wall itself for a connection point. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that did get mentioned just so everyone is aware of how these work in the wild, if you will. And now I'm gonna try and get this set up again loop here and you loop here play nice there we go let me get the camera camera's moving again camera's moving again so we're kind of playing um on the edge of the tavern on the edge of the world mm -hmm. so here we have here's the tavern now so this is going to be the tavern space and again for the pieces used for this it is a mix of curves town and village curves it is a mix of obviously town and village angles for the hallway and then i also use my town and village one for the set. I did have to dip into my dungeon tiles one set for more floor tiles. Okay. You will need more floor tiles for this layout than you will need for walls um, when you use the three sets together. So that's, that's a little disclaimer. I want to make sure you're aware of. So let me see here. Um, oh wait, there's one more little piece of the kitchen. Take it back. You also get this lovely little piece, little storage bin. So I'm gonna pop that 
against, it's gonna be hidden away, but I'm gonna pop it up against the wall by the door, the insert wall, okay? So now let's take it into here. Because there's other things I want to put in. Actually, let's do that. You know what, I'll take it back, take it back, take it back. Let's take a look, a little bit extra dressing for the kitchen. Because it's fun, why not? So we're still gonna dress up our kitchen. Yoink. Move the camera. Uh, so this is where I am tapping into other sets. Uh, so some of this, this is mostly marketplace. So I thought let's bring out the well, because if you want to have your exterior for the setup, you can have the well out near the privy. Uh, but I did grab, again, from marketplace. It's actually also the same well that you can get from the UPM with Kids Deep Pets line. Uh, and I'm going to add in a couple, another crate. This is from the marketplace, from the merchant stall, the accessory set from Warlock. That's another market's place. I am going to, I thought it would be fun to take some fish in the basket from the marketplace and pop that. Oh, let's put that on the island too. Um, so again, this is where you can take other pieces from the other sets and really enhance things. Tavern at the edge of the world, <laughs> it does sound like something from Douglas Adams. Um, is it? Because that was a total, total happenstance. And I'm also taking the grain sacks and I'm just gonna put them, not that you can see them, well you could, I can just change the camera. Uh, but I'm just gonna put them in here and now I feel like my kitchen has a lot of cool features going on here. I'm gonna take another one of the crates from Marketplace and this time I'm popping in the apples. So let's put a nice little crate of apples right by the back door. Do I wanna add anything else in here? I, that's looking pretty well stashed and then obviously if you wanted to put things on the shelves you could. Uh, but I wanted you to see that you can take extra stuff from other sets to really set the scene just that much more. Let's get a nice little overhead. See? So you have that going on. Manual zoom. Okay, let's pull this back. And we're going to tuck the kitchen back away over here. And now we're going to take a look at the tavern. I'll shift this over. Again, ta-da. And now, and pardon my carpet. <laughs> uh, the, that is a good question though. Uh, Bradley is asking if it lights up. It does not. It's its own little feature piece. It's a separate little piece that you can take in and out if you want it to have a fire or not. So no, the uh, fireplace does, or not, bleh, the oven, the stove does not have any uh, lighting effects to it. Um, oh, thank you so much for joining, Richard. Really do appreciate having you here. Now let's go into the tavern. So this is my tavern layout and I do have reach. I do have reach. Uh, I do have this little bedroom that is set off to the side and I am gonna take a full, once, once we're done, I'm taking a full photo of this, don't do that, so that everyone can see what's going on here. So with the tavern, you're getting some other fun pieces. Uh, let's start first with the tavern bar pieces because you get a few of them. And let me show you the box too. So we're gonna flip back to overhead. So here is the box for that. Again, everything is out of the packaging. <laughs> uh, but you see, it's this blister. And the blister, remember, it has a lid on it, which you can snap back into place if you wanna to choose to keep them in here. So here's the front, again, is that blue. Again, you have the gear on the side to show that it is an accessory set with the title of the set. And on the back, you get your layout of everything you can expect in this set ahead of time before you open it up, but you can also see them in the blister, just saying, as well as what you can expect from this. So in this one, you get a straight bar shape, an L shape, as well as a 45 degree angle for the bar itself. Then you also get a beer tap, a drink cabinet, a keg barrel, a bartender, a stone fireplace, a table, one, two stools, a bearskin rug, two beds, a bread loaf circle, a bread loaf that's elongated like a baguette almost, as well as a rooster. I'm not kidding. There's a cock a doodle doo in there. Um, so I'm going to pop the box back up there to live. And now we're going to take a look at those bar pieces themselves. So let's flip back to this one. All right. So here is that 45 degree angle. And again, I'm just going to shift the zoom because now we're looking at, or the focus, I should say shift the focus since we are looking at the smaller pieces so as you can see this one has a lighter wood on the top of the bar and then it goes into a darker wood both have wood grain detailing and it has this lovely molding look to the outside not molding as in mold bad for you molding as in details to the wood so this is the corner piece 
which I am going to, where am I placing you? Mm, I don't know yet. Actually, I do. There, I'm gonna place you right there. And then we have, this is the straight on piece, okay? So again, you can see it has a stained wood look to it, but it's a lighter wood on the top. And then we go back into this almost honey maple stained wood look. So that is another piece of the bar, like so. And then, how did I set this up yesterday? I did make note of this. Did I? I thought I had it like this. Hold on, let me look at my pictures. I took pictures of this one. This is why you want to take pictures for reference. Because I had a very set thing in mind. This is why you want to take pictures. Mm -hmm. You come here. Oh, I see what I did. Okay. So what I did here was fun. So I did this with the bar. Then I turned the bar this way. And then I did this. So that just goes to show you, there's a bunch of different ways you can put these three pieces together to really have a fun little look to it. So there we go. That is the bar. Okay, so the bar is now in place in our tavern. And from there, uh, you have a table. Now, the table is also wood grain, wood stain, same color as the bottom portion of the bar pieces. Fireplace for the tavern. You will see one. Yes, our Martinez. So I'm going to put the table, oh, let's put the table over here near the door. So there goes in a table. Now keep in mind, you only get two stools, but also it's not like you're taking your miniatures and having them sit down on the stool. So there is that little caveat to it. I'm going to put the stools, we'll put the stools at the bar, or you could put them by the table, or we could just put them really where anywhere we want. Uh, why do I like having these little set pieces even though technically the minis can't use them? Because then what happens is, is when your players walk into this room, and this is speaking from experience as a DM, when you have your players walk into the room and they are seeing all this interaction happening, happy, happy, fun, look at all these neat things, I will guarantee you one of your players will see one of these little objects just scattered in the room and it will become an improvised weapon. <laughs> Not even kidding. Um, so that's why it's always great to have these little extra bits in your set dressing essentially is what this is. Um, so you get the two stools and then we have the, let's pull out the, here, let me show you the fireplace, okay? So here is the stone fireplace, which look at the fun details on this one. You have the two different tones of brick as well as a plaster uh, sort of uh, stucco going on and various so stone sizes in the base of it. So you have the brick chimney here, stones on the bottom, you have the hearth. You also have this adorable little fire that you can place in there and you can remove it as needed. So that's a put wherever you want, if you want it to be this lit or it's not. And there you go. Oh my gosh, could you imagine? I'm gonna tuck it again into this little bump out that I created. And I even had some fun by, it's like, you know how when you're um, with a fireplace, if you've ever been into, again, one of those older castles, sometimes you'll see they actually switch from having the wooden floor near the fireplace to stone. So I did a little nod to that using the curved tiles that go with the town and village curved set. And now my fireplace just sort of, sort of sits right there, happy as a little clam. Uh, and then we also have the keg on a stand. And if you've seen these, this is also, you can see, you have seen these in the UPM line. I've painted many of these. I've painted more of these than I can actually literally count. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to put this one maybe over there. Hmm. We'll put that there. Uh, and then, but wait, there's more. And then we have the bearskin rug. A nice rich chocolatey brown highlighted more of a warmer tan and you have that fantastic fur detail happening I am gonna put this near that right near the fireplace and here is the cabinet which yes it 
it should, she says. It does open and close. It's just, I have to pull it up closer. Here we go. Opened. Yes, yes. Be careful opening it, okay? So it does open. But just slowly open it because otherwise it does want to hip hiccup a little bit. Uh, but there you have them opening. And the upper cabinets do as well. However, I'm not going to finick around with that too much. But they do open and close, just so you're aware of that. Uh, and I'm going to put this back here behind the bar. Just because it seems to make sense for the barkeep. Uh, what else do we have going on? Oh, here we have the... This is where we're getting into tiny things. Begging your pardon, I'm right on top of the microphone. Uh, da, 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 here we go. So here we get into our small features. This is your tapped keg. Just like that. And it's stand. Again, you have seen this with our UPM. I'm trying to remember which way this works again. Like that. Um, so I'm going to put this... Oh, let's have fun and say it's up there on the bar itself. Why the heck not? Except we'll have it facing in towards the barkeep and not out towards the patrons because, you know, it's not free beer night. It's not free beer night yet at the keg or at the uh, tavern that has no name. Um, hello, Calcius! Happy hour. Very happy hour. And here we have our small things. Here's the rooster. And then here is the long bread. And here is the round bread. Okay, so I think the rooster, I'm actually going to tongue-in-cheek this. And let's... That doesn't come from. Let's put the rooster outside by the outhouse. Because why not? And the bread, we can always put the bread on the table here. And we'll put... The other one over here, maybe someone is partaking. And then what I can do is take my wee little mugs that were from the kitchen set. I will say, the kitchen and the tavern set complement each other beautifully. I would highly, speaking for myself, collector of minis and terrain, I would say getting the two of them together is well worth it, as well as adding in, like I said, I'm grabbing from the marketplace um, and a couple of the other sets too. Uh, dungeon dressings uh, that also came with Warlock. And here is, here's our barkeep who also does not have a name. So if you want to name the barkeep today, by all means, I think we're landing on like a Betsy for our barmaid. So we have a Betsy and we need a, what is his name? So he is already set and ready to go. And then let me adjust to focus again here. Oh wait, no, because I still have the beds. So one, one moment please. And then you get two of these beds. So here is the bed, it's a double bed. Kelly Green quilted coverlet on the top. Sheets, just classic sheets on there. Barnabas. Oh, I kind of like that. Betsy and Barnabas. Let's go with that. I like that. Betsy and Barnabas. Betsy and Barnabas are our, we'll call them the proprietors. They're a lovely couple. They enjoy having people visit them. I'm going to put these in that side bedroom over yonder can see right there is where the beds are gonna live well not live but exist and it even has like you can go outside to that door here's another insert here don't forget if you're inserting a door make sure you have a clip in the center of that tile but yeah this gives us a general concept of the let me shift my microphone slightly push this back Bear with me, folks. I'm trying to get as much as I possibly can. I think that's limiting to here-ish, unless can I... Yeah, it's about... I'm at full zoom. So, this gives you an idea of the layout. And what I'm going to do is also work a little bit more here on our tavern and pull a couple more sets out. Uh, I tapped back into Dungeon Dressings, which is one of the first accessory sets that came out with Warlock Tiles, just so I can have another table, which we'll put over here. Again, just set dressings. And then I, don't laugh, I actually went into the torture chamber. <laughs> but um, I went into the torture chamber and I pulled out the braziers. So I'm just gonna put a little brazier for lighting purposes. Let's put one there. 
and one over there in the hallway. That's how they get lighted. And I also grabbed the lovely torches, which, oh. so I'm gonna put one of the torches back over here and another one over in here for lighting purposes. Uh, but it just, it kind of gives you a more rounded out factor as to what's happening. Uh, and then let's have a little bit more fun with it. Let's start adding some people to the tavern. What do we say? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So let us add, let me move my cursor out of the way. Sorry, folks. So let's say, yeah, let's do this. Because I was in the uh, torture chamber, <laughs> I pulled out the miniatures from that one. So we have... I was tempted. <laughs> oh God, I'd love to have a camera person to help me out. Are you kidding me? Um, but so because I pulled into the torture chamber, I grabbed the assistant and the torturer. And I also, since I had the marketplace out, <laughs> I pulled out the executioner. So let, let them just have like, you know, it's been a long day for them. They, they've had a hard day. Let's just, they're, they're enjoying breaking bread together. Okay. They're having some fun breaking bread. Um, well, I'm actually going to disagree with you there respectfully, Destoril. Uh, like I said before, I have done dressings like this and setups like this on my own games uh, for terrain, running games as a DM, and they very much do uh, create new situations, new interactions, and get people to think outside of the box in terms of how they're going to interact what actions they're going to take and things along those lines, even if they can use things as a different weapon. Um, yeah, that's something you could do, Mike Baker, is add like a little extra foot pad to it. Um, <laughs> if you want to have the smaller pieces stay upright. Sometimes what I will even do is I will take those pieces and I will actually super glue them in places I know would just make sense and that keeps them steady. Uh, so let's get some more people in here. So I also pulled... These are, these are merchants, okay? So these are from the marketplace. So what I'm gonna do with them, because I realized as I was holding them, it almost looks like they're waltzing. So we could have it where maybe they're just sort of over here, either having a conversation or they're waltzing together. Um, so again, this is setting up NPC interaction potential. So let's put them there. And now I'm gonna go into, is there anything else I wanna grab from here? This is the dungeon dressings, so... No, I think I'm good with that one. So we have those lovely people in there, and then... Oh, there they are. I'm looking for... Alright, so I'm tapping into here is going to be... Some more people. This is the town watch. Or merchants. I think this is town watch. So I'm just gonna pull a couple more of the miniatures out. So I'm gonna take the actors out and get them in there as well. Oh, and let's grab, do we want the pirates in there? Could put the pirates in there. That could be fun. Let's have the pirates at the bar. Pirate one, pirate two. And then maybe we have a sneaky little rogue hanging out in the corner there. Uh, you have your performers. Let's say they are putting on a show by the fireplace. Entertaining. All right. But again, this is, it's giving you more to work with. And we have our smithies. You know what? They've also had a long day. Let them stand at the bar. Uh, is the bar some, no, it is not. That's a very good question. It is not similar to the Rusty Dragon Inn set. Um, it is a little bit different. Uh, you don't get the back pieces like you do with a Rusty Bar Inn. Uh, so it is a very, it's a, it's a good question. Um, there are similarities, of course, but it is not the exact same thing. You're not getting the painted version of it if that's what you're looking into or questioning. Uh, let's see, I like putting those in there. And then, oh yes, just have sort of the, here we go. Let's have some fun. We'll have our uh, soldier standing there. I put the lid on this one. Yeah, I don't need to bring out the forge. We don't need the forge. And you know what? I'm going to tap into... So I'm tapping into Town Watch and Merchants. So the sets I showed you last week. Just to have a little bit more here. Um, ooh, you know what could be fun? Speaking of, I'm actually going to pull the shelves from that set. 
and put the shelves up there from the uh, merchant stand. And who else? Could oh, you know what? Let's bring out the other executioner, okay? It has been a very busy day. And they're just kind of chilling out and relaxing. There's, there's our story right there. Uh, any others? Oh, here's the, here's the other uh, merchant. So we'll put her... Let's put her here. So you can see, it's just, it basically, I'll stop, because I, I could honestly do this for way longer than I need to. Um, so basically it turns into that as you collect these sets and as you put them together, you are able to create these more complex and vivid scenes so that now, literally by planning this ahead of time, you've pretty much just set yourself up for an encounter of some sort. All right? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, that is what I'm going for, Morpheus. You have created an encounter here. You have either role play potential. You have either something happens between these fellows, this fellow back here. It just opens up a whole world of possibilities for how you're going to run a night at a tavern, essentially. And they can go and go into different aspects. They could go back into the kitchen where poor Betsy, she has no idea any of this is happening, uh, but she knows that this fellow, maybe he ran out the door. Oh, he went that way type of situation. Or you might have it where you know, maybe someone is trying to take something out of the... Don't forget we had that little bedroom over there. Maybe there was something tucked away in the bedroom for one of the patrons. And someone's trying to break in there. So it's one of those things that... Hello, Shazam! That as soon as you start adding more elements, more pieces, more dressing, more visual cues for your players, the more varied, the more complex, the more interesting things are going to get at that table for you. Um, I will highly recommend that keep yourself thinking of improvisational aspects as well uh, in terms of what's going to go on here. But that is pretty much the full layout along with a little side bedroom over here. So I'm going to take a picture of all of this now that it's dressed up and ready to go. I will also be sure that in the description below, uh, once I add it in for Twitch and update it on YouTube, I'll mention all the sets that were used to create this full look. In terms of the build look, I will also clarify which sets were used for the build. So that can kind of be your little cheat sheet for what I did today. Um, and I am going to be taking close-up photos of all of this so that people get, you know, a more uh, detailed view as to how this all works together. But you can see it really does create this fun little world just by combining these sets and having them work together. And it's honestly a lot of fun. Like, I, I'm excited about the idea of potentially running a game. You know, steer right into the you meet at a tavern cliche and see what the players do with all of this. I, I can guarantee you, quite frankly, I bet you more than anything, all of my players that I've worked with in the past, they're going to be exploring that outhouse first as soon as they know it's there. I need to go use the outhouse. Why? Well, I want to see if there's something in there. Maybe a mimic. No, I'm kidding. Or maybe something else. Um... Let's see, will there be cast a castle system and a window system? I mean, like, you know... Wait, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, so, uh, the castle system... You're really more looking at right now the dungeon tiles because that has the stone walls. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, will they... No, we don't have intentions of designing warlock adventures uh, in the least. That's not something concept-wise, Mike. This is more like, by nature of my creating and making terrain, building terrain... Uh, this is where my mind goes to and works as I'm setting things up. I start plotting. I start thinking this is just my own nature uh, Outhouse mimic smells like danger. Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, so again everything you are seeing here today Is out in stores. So please be sure to check with your FLGS friendly local game store If you are not sure where they are, this is for those who have been here the whole time Forgive me, but this is for those who've come in a little bit later and how to those who came in later uh, if you want to try and find a store near you go to whizkids.io slash local store and you can plug in all the information you'll see pop up on the menu. Uh, then, if you see these stores uh, listed after you hit enter, those are all stores that carry WizKids products. Okay? Uh, you can contact them, find out what they're doing. Many of them are making things like uh, scheduled pickups. Uh, they will do things like appointments so you can be in the store and it's like literally you and the proprietor. I'm not even kidding. I've heard of some doing this. Um... <laughs> Yes, Leonardo, that's more just sitting there just because, um, you know, space. Uh, so it's one of those things where reach out to them first and see what they have available. 
If for some reason you go to that site and you don't have a store nearby, then by all means, please hop over to shop.wizkids.com or you can check other online sources as well for these sets. Everything is out. The Kitchen and Tavern are out as of today. I'm not even kidding. How wonderful is that? Kitchen and Tavern out on St. Patrick's Day. Woo, that is fun. Uh, I will definitely be going back and pulling all of those lovely names that were suggested. And with photos of the final layout, I will put the poll up so we can have some fun with um, naming this tavern because I think it would be fun to get a name on this one for sure. Uh, again, I'm going to update descriptions so all of the sets are listed. Uh, and then I'm going to flip over to overhead because it'll be a lot easier. And again, when you are out and about and you're shopping for these things, you want to remember that there are three colors involved with the sort of coding system for the sets. If you come across a set that is yay size, but it is an amethyst purple color, that is a core set. So I'm talking about town and village. I am talking about dungeon tiles. Those are the ones that will have the walls, that will have the tiles. Everything comes with easy clips, um, except for the accessory sets, obviously. Uh, so that's the type of thing where you want to take a look at those to get yourself started. Then you have the greens, the emerald greens. Those are our expansion sets. That means they have extra pieces to help sort of add into what you have to your core sets. After that, you have accessories, and that's like a sapphire, a deep sapphire blue color. That means those are accessories. They will not have things like the walls or the tile pieces themselves or the clips because that is not their function. Their function is more to act as set dressing and to enhance what your builds are. So if you're looking for strictly build factors with your warlock tiles, that is where you want to tap into getting your core sets, which are purple, and your expansion sets, which are green. If you want to have fun like I did today mostly in terms of setting the scene, that is absolutely where you want to get your accessory sets so you can flesh out and give more depth to your presentation and your terrain build. The accessory sets, $49.99. The expansion sets are usually $79.99. When it comes to the core sets, they will vary in price because of heights and walls. The Town and Village 1 uh, is a one inch high wall, so those are $99.99. And then the Town and Village 2, as well as the Dungeon Tile 2 and the Dungeon Tile uh, Dungeon Tile and Town and Village 2, those are the two inch high walls. Those are $129.99. And obviously Dungeon Tile 1 is the same as Town and Village 1. That's $99.99. Um, I think that has... Yes, that was everything. I'm like literally going through that. Now, really quick, just in general, I did pull up releases. So along with Tavern and Kitchen, you're also going to have Town Watch and Merchants. Those are available this week. Um, and then you have coming up uh, from the 40 settings, we have the catapult and battering ram. They will be available in stores. And that is, let's see what else we have here. And then in addition to that, Boneyard, the D&D Boneyard for in terms of releases, that will be coming out into March. March 31st is the date I'm looking at right now. And uh, let's leave it at, oh, and then the town square. That was the other thing, because I did show you town square last week. That is coming out in April right now. I have a date of April. Keep in mind, any delays, any adjustments in terms of when things are releasing is very much tied into the fact that deliveries are still a little wonky out there. Uh, we are doing the very best we can to make sure we are getting these products out to you in a timely fashion, but there are some things that are truly out of our control, and that is when the things get in and when they get shipped out. Uh, a lot of it is due because of you know, the situation at hand. Uh, it definitely does affect shipping still. Uh, so please keep that in mind. If there's ever a slip in product, not in production, if there's ever a slip in release dates, it is more often than not directly related to the fact that we are still waiting for the products to even get to where they need it to be because of the shipping delays. And everyone is experiencing this. So other stores, other shops, other businesses are also experiencing this as well. Uh, so we do appreciate your patience and your understanding in this matter because again, like I said, it's pretty much out of our control. We act as soon as we can once we have the products ready and in our hands, but sometimes we're playing the uh, where is this sitting now game. Uh, so that is just something to keep in mind. Next week, what I'm going to be taking a look at is definitely D&D related. We're going to be taking a look at the Goblin Warband as well as the Adult Blue Dragon and a couple other sets that I think you're going to have some fun with too. Uh, so it's going to be a D&D day next week. So please be sure to join me next week for that. We're going to have a grand old time as well uh, and take it from there. 
I think that pretty much covers everything. So for those of you who've been hanging out with me since the very start at noon, thank you so much. I hope you had a great time. Do keep an eye out for that poll. I'm literally gonna cut it, not cut everything, shut everything down that I need to, make my little tweaks and adjustments as I need to for post-production. And part of that is going to be making sure, I don't know if my stream is doing this, uh, and make sure that I get that poll up and running with uh, some of the names and we'll see some, if not all. I forget how many I can put in to Twitter if there's a cap on count. Uh, but we'll see what the winning name is gonna be and I will have fun making that announcement and sharing some photos with you all too of this whole layout. Uh, just because, you know, I had fun building it out, but I made it too long. <laughs> but thank you again. Uh, this is one of those things where I always enjoy sharing this with you. I always like giving you a heads up about the products and how they work and what to expect. Again, keep in mind that there will be some more how-to videos for Warlock tiles coming in the future, simply because they are working a little differently with some of the sets with the curves and angles, uh, with the one inch wide, not the high, the one inch wide tiles. There's some nuances about them that I wanna make sure everyone better understands. It's just a matter of my getting a chance to sit down, create, film, edit, send out for all of you to enjoy and appreciate. Uh, so if you ever have an issue with it, you are by all means welcome to quickly shoot a message over to me. You can find me on, honestly, Twitter is the best way, best way to reach me. If you're having, you know, a tile question, you can always just shoot a message or not message me, uh, sh at me, shoot an at me. Don't shoot at me, shoot an at me. <laughs> and we can take it from there. Um, thank you so much, everyone. This was wonderful. If you haven't, feel free to like, subscribe, follow, hit the notifications so you know when we go live with things like Mini Mayhem or Much Do About Gaming, which happens every Tuesday at noon, or when we have things like the Scott Porter unboxings. We just had Wonder Woman happening next week and that was so much fun to see pulled together. And oh, other things are coming up down the pipeline as well that I can't talk about yet, but I will tease you with it. <laughs> that really is, I promise I'm done. Okay, 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 okay. Wrap it up the way I always do. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other. I'll see you on the flip side. Okay. Take care, everyone. Bye.